Hi everyone, in this video I am going to explain about the realizations of SEMA circuits with the different different configurations. So in the SEMA circuit, entire logic circuit is completely realized with the two different uh, transistors. One is PMOS transistor and the other one is the NMOS transistor. In the pull up place completely we will use PMOS and in the pull down place completely we will use NMOS realization. See here, uh, CMOS circuit. CMOS realization consisting of PMOS circuits, whatever the logic that we are going to implement that is completely done in case of PMOS realization that is in between VDD and output and NMOS realization in between output and the ground. NMOS realization in between output and the ground or we can also call it as VSS. Okay, so all the PMOS transistors suppose if there are uh, suppose consider for the inverter for example for example I am taking inverter circuit. Okay, complementary metal oxide semiconductor CMOS circuit by default it acts like a inverter so whatever the realization that we have implemented with respect to PMOS and NMOS realizations that will be giving a complemented form at the output, giving a complemented form at the output. Here we are giving the inputs, here also we are giving inputs, okay. The inputs of for this PMOS and NMOS are common to both these logics. Suppose if there is an inverter, input is nothing but A output we are saying a bar so how many inputs are there one input so for one input we need for this realization we need one pmos transistor and one nmos transistor with input a to both the of these transistors then output will be a bar complemented form <coughs> this is first example suppose if you are taking a nand gate NAND gate. So in the NAND gate, how many? Let us consider a two input NAND gate. Two input NAND gate. Then A and B are inputs. Output will be what could be the output for the two input NAND gate? A into B bar. A into B bar. So it is a complemented version at the output. So that is why it is A into B bar directly available with the output of the CMOS logic. How many PMOS and how many NMOS transistors are required to realize this logic function? So two inputs are there, nothing but two PMOS transistors and two NMOS transistors. Two PMOS transistors and two NMOS transistors. So totally here we need two transistors, here we need four transistors. Okay, that means we can say the number of inputs, number of PMOS, and number of NMOS transistors is equal to number of number of PMOS R. You can say here R not and exactly. So number of PMOS R number of NMOS transistors is equal to number of inputs. If you are using and here that becomes twice of the number of inputs then total PMOS and NMOS transistors will come into picture. Okay, This is the logic realization of the CMOS circuits with inputs and output. Now let us see how the PMOS transistors are connected and how the NMOS transistors are connected. So if PMOS transistor see here PMOS transistor must be PMOS uh, circuits must be in between VDD and in between VDD and output and NMOS circuit must be in between output and ground as we have shown in the previous slide 
<coughs> if PMOS transistors, if PMOS transistors are in series connection, NMOS transistors must be in parallel. NMOS must be in parallel. So, in CMOS realization, this is the condition that we should follow. Like, uh, if PMOS transistors are connected in series, then NMOS transistors must be connected in parallel. So, it opposite with the realizations of both. Opposite case, if PMOS transistors if PMOS transistors are in parallel, then NMOS transistors must be in series. NMOS transistors must be in series. This is how the realization is going to happen. Now, let us consider uh, one condition per product per product in the logic function logic function for product in the logic function means for example a into b suppose for example if you are taking a nand operation nand operation is having the two inputs like a b then the function logic function of the nand output is nothing but a into b whole bar so here a b two transistors inputs a into b are nothing but in product so for product for product in the logic function like a into b bar the pmos transistors the pmos transistors must be connected in parallel the pmos transistors must be connected in parallel if you observe this line <coughs> see here for product realization the pmos transistors must be in parallel pmos transistors must be in parallel so this is called ppp okay you can use this triple p concept to design any logical function because if it is input if it is uh, just uh, simply for inverter NAND and NOR gates yeah, of course you can remember but when you are going for the realizations of different logic functions like a b plus c into d whole bar a plus c into <coughs> b plus c into d whole bar like that if you are having different realizations then definitely you should remember a concept like a triple p see for product realization First P represents the product. Second P represents how the PMOS transistor is connected. And the third P representing the parallel. So PMOS transistor should be connected in parallel for the product realization. Okay, I will tell when you when we go to the NAND realizations. Now, let me tell you how to draw the CMOS inverter. CMOS inverter, as we are seeing the CMOS inverter uh, diagram every time. CMOS inverter diagram, you may know. <coughs> Okay, so CMOS inverter input is equal to something like A. Output always in CMOS circuit diagrams are out for output. I will consider Y as the output. Okay, it is of your wish, no problem. But in general, Y is taken as the output. After seeing the Y itself, we can assume that it belongs to the output function. So input is equal to A, output equal to Y. So, one CMOS, uh, sorry, one PMOS transistor in the pull-up place and one NMOS transistor in the pull-down place with common input, with common input. This is the input plus VDD ground. This is PMOS transistor and this one is the NMOS transistor. 
from the center of these two you will be having the output v out or we can write it as y okay so if you want to write in terms of logical functions take it as y and input a here a b c something like that if you want to write in terms of voltages then use v out and input okay generally for the all these realizations we go with the y only because it is a digital representation <coughs> One more point what you need to remember is even though the CMOS circuit is having source and that means so the MOSFET is having source and drain are interchangeable. There is no fixed terminal to say it is a source and drain. You can use depending on the application. But for our uses the drain terminal is always set to be output. The drain terminal is always set to be output. So this is the drain terminal for this transistor and this is the drain terminal for this transistor. Of course, at the input we know very well these two are gate terminals. Here the source terminal is connected to the VDD and the source terminal is connected to the ground. Okay, source terminal is connected to VDD and at the bottom for the below transistor, NMOS transistor, the source terminal is connected to ground. Okay, so this is what the realization of the CMOS inverter. We know very well when input is equal to 0. What happens when input is equal to 0? If input equal to 0, PMOS transistor, PMOS transistor set to be on because for 0 it will be going to 1 inside and that transistor becomes on and NMOS transistor becomes off for 0 input. Okay, so now what is the output? Output is connected to VDD as PMOS transistor is in on state, output is having a direct connection from the VDD. So output is equal to VDD. And if input is equal to 1, if input is equal to 1, I am saying in terms of logical representations, 0 and 1, nothing but 0 volts and 5 volts. So this one makes the PMOS transistor off and NMOS transistor on. When NMOS transistor is in on state, there is a connection, direct connection from output to the ground and there is no connection between VDD and output. So therefore, output Y is equal to, we can say it is 0 volts. It is VDD volts. How much it is? Generally, we will consider 5 volts. Okay. This is what we are having in the CMOS inverter logic realization. In the next video, I will explain about uh, the NAND and NOR realizations in the CMOS logics.